this recording? Are we good? We good? What up? What up? What up? Man, it is Dev the Voice. Another episode of Button Mashing. Um, I think I'm about to walk away with a dub today. But what I will say is this. I'm excited for this one. I have somebody who I think has been blazing the Midwest for a while. Uh, they're a home and family member of the Cleveland, Ohio crew. But they're so much bigger, man. You may have seen them on some of the playlists on Apple, Tidal, Spotify. You may have seen her new video, Jeeps, which I'm going to tell you right now, I have. Chelsea, pastel. What up, dude? What's up? What's so look, so Chelsea, this is your first time on Button Mash, and it's actually your first time interviewing with the Out Righteous Podcast, but how this is about to work is I'ma beat up on you in Mortal Kombat, but while I'm beating up on you, I'ma ask you these interview questions, and we're gonna have some fun with it. All right. So it's only right that the king himself has the PS5 copy. Um, you ever played Mortal Kombat before? Um, barely. Rarely? Yeah, I wasn't allowed to play it when I was young, so I just didn't really like get into it. You know what? I respect that though. <laughs> Cause it was mad stuff that I couldn't play coming up either. Like I couldn't play Grand Theft coming up. Got you. But I used to like sneak. Like yeah. I sneak into my brother room and like just like I would jump on San Andreas and I turn the volume all the way down. Cause you know CJ used to talk spicy on San Andreas. Alright, so best of five, Chelsea. I have Sub Zero. You got Jackie Briggs. Press X. Oh, I'm definitely about to get a dub. I seen you had to look at the controller yeah. to press X. <laughs> nah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely about to walk her. I'm about to be 2-0 and on this series, man. Um, Chelsea, let's start here with this. All right. So, Jeeps. Jeeps, that single is very fire. Thank you. You want to know what really impressed me about it, though? What's up? The visuals. Yeah. The visuals was hard. So tell me a little bit. I know you teamed up with, I think it's uh, Destiny Fulfilled. Yep. I know you teamed up with Destiny Fulfilled to shoot that video. What was the process on that? Like, how did how did you get that to work? Um, so... Damn, okay, okay, so, okay. I thought you never played before. All right, Matt. Nah, go ahead. <laughs> so, um, me and Destiny, we actually met at a show I had at Rebar yeah. back in March. Uh-huh. And um, we pretty linked up, I want to say, the following link, yeah. the following week. Yeah. And I just played her some of the music that I had, um, just to give her an idea of the sounds. Um, I really didn't have too many videos out at the time. Yeah. Uh, I really didn't have any videos out other than like from years ago. So she heard Jeeps and instantly kind of like just start coming up with ideas. She said it reminded her of a video game, wow. which was crazy because when I produced it, um, that's kind of the vibe that I was going for with Wait, the Wait, you produced the song too? Yeah. Back. Yeah, I produced it. I actually produced that beat. So like I had a crazy day. I was working at the studio and we just had a wild day. Um, I was really upset. And the beat, if you take the drums out, it sounds really angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, once we added some stuff to it, it sounds happier. But yeah, it was kind of a video game vibe I was going for with the bass line. Yeah. So um, she wanted to go that route. She had she wanted to check out the studio in LA. Uh -huh. um, and I wanted to shoot a video for that song a long time ago, but I could never find a good location in Cleveland that looked like bright enough yeah. or just kind of had the vibe that I wanted. Yeah. Um, so it worked out. So we went to LA. Oh, y'all uh, shot that in LA too? Yeah, we oh, shot hardcore. we shot some parts of it in Cleveland and yeah. we shot some parts of it uh, in LA. We shot in Malibu. Okay. We shot um, in this little studio, yeah. production um, studio. And okay. then, um, yeah. So who, who, who's like, so it was Destiny's idea to do the Sega thing, right? Yeah. I'm not going to hold you. I used to love Sonic the Hedgehog. Really? Do you remember what the very, that, hold on now, Chuck. Okay, I see you. Let me grab you up a little bit. All right, <laughs> boom. Um, do you remember what the very first video game that you ever played was? Like when yeah. you first turned, what was it? Uh, Crash Bandicoot. You know what? This is actually the perfect interview because that was the first thing. I was trying to tell everybody that that was the first game I played and they looked at me like I was crazy. Really? You want to know the wildest thing about Crash Bandicoot? What did the dude who had the, when you would put that mask on, that little wooden dude, what was he always saying? Like you would put him on and he'd be like, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, never. That's a cool, a cool. I like that, man. But nah, so Crash Bandicoot was the first video game. Which one was it though? Uh, just remember? the first one. And actually like in Jeeps, when we, uh, the part where we, we like, we, um, teleport into the actual video game. Yeah, that's hard. We kind of imitate that. Yeah. Where at the beginning of Crash Bandicoot, you kind of get washed up on the beach. And yeah, he's yeah. like, whoa! Yeah. So that's pretty much what we <laughs> yeah, imitate yeah, yeah. And at yeah. the start of that video. But um, yeah, just the original Crash Bandicoot and then Pokemon, I want to say yellow. Mm, and it was crazy because classic. at the time I was so young, I couldn't really read. Yeah. So like I had to keep going to my mom. And be like, like what, what did this? I catch? What is this? <laughs> yeah. What is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it actually helped me learn how to read. 
Pokemon did. Yeah. Cause hey, yo. It was, you gotta read to play the game. We gotta, we need to write them a letter. Definitely. We need to write them a letter. Yo, Pokemon, if you watching this video, y'all just changed Chelsea's life. Well, y'all didn't just change it, but y'all changed Chelsea's life. If it, if it wasn't, right. yeah, if it wasn't for y'all Pokemon, then she may not be the artist that she is today. Um, so I was when I was doing some homework on on your music, man. I was I feel like you are one of the artists who has been doing some really dope stuff, and maybe everybody, I don't I don't want to say that they not paying attention, but I don't think that the city or the Midwest is really aware of some of the dope stuff that you've done. Oh, I so, can agree more. so so then you know what? So then since you can agree, and I like that, you tell me. Can you give the people a little bit of like insight into some of the specifics? I think you know what I'm talking about. Um, and maybe we can start with like, let's start with the sinking, with the sink licensing deals and stuff like that. Tell me a little bit about those. Yeah, so um, that's pretty interesting. So like in January, I literally posted on Facebook. I was like, I really want my songs to be on TVs and movies this year. Yeah, yeah. And by March, it all ended up unfolding. Uh -huh. So basically, um, I had this song that I was coming out with called Stop Asking. Yeah. And I was, I think I put that out at the end of February. Okay. But I had a private link that I was just sending a couple tastemakers, yeah. um, a few people in the industry, yeah, just yeah. to get a, some feedback the day before release. Yeah. And um, I sent it to this guy, Philippe, who works at Radio. Okay. That's Issa Rae's label music company where mm -hmm. she does music supervision. And, and the, the Insecure soundtrack is always fire, too. Yeah. So, yeah, See, yeah. and now she outsources her supervision, her music supervision department for other projects oh, wow. uh, okay. that aren't actually like her show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I sent him in and he, he was like, you have time for a call? Yeah. So I was like, oh, sure. Wow. Yeah. So he um, he told me, he was like, we got something coming up. We partnered up with Viacom. Mm. And we, um, we're looking for some songs for Sync. Yeah. Uh, and he told me basically the terms of the Be Under. Yeah. Um, the songs would be exclusive, meaning that they wouldn't be like actual music that I put out. It uh -huh. was just songs that I had to create specifically for. That, um, oh, that's even shows. harder though. Yeah, so yeah. they give you what's called a brief. Yeah. And a brief is basically different settings. So you might get a brief that says party scene, college kids, drinking, yeah. um, dancing. You gotta yeah. make some type of song that kind of fits that vibe. Um, you can't have any curse words. Um, you can't have any samples, wow. anything like that. Yeah. So, um, because of the time constraint, we, we had pretty much a real short amount of time to make it happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did some of my production and I outsourced with two of my friends. Okay. Uh, one of them, her name is Tay Supreme. She's from New Jersey. She produces. And my guy Castile, he goes by Cash's G Production. He's from here, but he's uh, based in Atlanta right now. Okay. So okay. we kind of just put our heads together. Um, put some tracks together. I kind of went in my writing mode and just wrote a like lot that. of songs like within a short amount of time. I would record it. We would send it to Castile. He would engineer it. And we pretty much just cranked everything out until we got about six songs wow. um, sold to them. Dang. So, so, so y'all basically sold them like a little EP almost. Basically. Um, before we talk, I want to talk about that, the syncing a little bit more. But you didn't do a fatality. Why you ain't doing no fatality? I don't know how yet. Give me time, I'll figure it out. All right, I got you. Do you want to, so wait, so I won one, you won one. So it's okay. one, one right now. Okay. Do you want to pick a new character or you want to keep running with, you like Jackie? I like Jackie. I'm I like Jackie. Jackie. Jackie is dope. I like Sub-Zero too. No, 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 no. Actually, you know what? I'm going to pick a new character. I'm going to change it up. All right. Because I don't want to keep doing you the way that I did you in these first two. Okay. 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 So I feel like this, man. I'm, I'm learning about a lot of artists like how they're sort of moving more so into, instead of trying to create this like platinum song, trying to get those sync deals and trying and like really executing that business aspect of the music. And for you, it seems like you've done that business aspect much better than, than I would say most people that I've seen. And, and this is why I'll say that. Um, I remember when you performed at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, um, I, I, I've seen multiple articles on the effort and the like intelligence that you try to attack every project and every opportunity with who was so who who was the coach who or mentor hmm. that helps you like make those decisions or put you on the path to be this calculated with the music um well for the longest i kind of was just kind of like between just me and running some ideas past like my boyfriend a yeah. few friends yeah maybe my older sister okay that was pretty much it yeah. um a lot of it was just really intuitive yeah, yeah you know i would because i worked at the rock hall we had a lot of like 
we had a lot of artifacts, a lot of things just on the history of the business aspect of itself. Wow. So on the slow days where in the summer you would hit, you would get like 3,000 people to come in, yeah. just tourists and stuff. But in the wintertime, nobody's coming in there. So I just walk around and just read, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And kind of look at what people did that worked, that didn't work. Yeah. Um, read a lot of books, watch a lot of interviews. Yeah. I watch interviews all day. Like I'm actually pretty annoying with it. You really? know what I mean? I watch interviews, documentaries, and just pretty much try to get as much game as possible. Yeah. Um, I recently started, my team is recently coming together. I like that. Um, but for the, for the longest, it was just kind of like a lot of trial and error. Mm. Um, took a few L's, you know what you I mean? You got to. Took a few L's, some in silence, some loud, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to, I was, in a non-creep way, I was like stalking your social medias, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I really do mean that in a non-creep way, right? <laughs> So the one thing that I, I saw when I was going through your social medias is you had mentioned this time where you had received a text message from somebody who you had had a connection with or looked up to, yeah. I would say. And that text message almost, I don't want to say it choked you up a little bit or brought you, but it, it got a reaction from you because it just connected to you, right? Definitely. Can you tell us who that text message was from? Yeah, so it was Crazy Bone. Oh wow, that's hard. Oh, that's yeah. hard. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, hard. Yeah, it was pretty sick. So, um, I met Crazy Bone a couple years ago, like back in 2018, I want to say. Okay. Um, I was asked to do some production for, I guess, what will be a new Bone Thugs project or oh, some that's sort. Tough. So, I made all these beats. Um, it's crazy. I got so excited about the beats that I stood up too fast and my hard drive fell and broke. Oh, did too. So all the beats. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, so, your hard drive broke with yeah, all of the. Yeah, like the hard drive with Jeez. the beats on it broke. But I was able to recover some stuff, but a lot of it was an L. Um, a big L, man, that I'm still holding. Like, I got the hard drive. They're talking about they want like $1,800 to fix it, to recover the data. So it's just in a box right now. Not but, for sure. Um, so like I'm in the studio session and I just remember it was like a bunch of extra people who didn't need to be at the studio session. Like yeah, yeah. I can't do like the triple packed out studios For where sure. just it's a bunch of people who not rapping, they're not yeah. recording. Mm -hmm. So it was one of those situations and I just went outside and it looked like he did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So we ended up just sitting there talking and we talked for about 30 minutes. Okay. And, uh, we exchanged numbers and whatnot. And he was wow. just like, yeah, keep in touch. Yeah. So fast forward like a year later, um, I was recording this song that I made called East Side. Okay. And um, it kind of has like this retro vibe to it. I kind of. I think I heard East Side. Is that available for stream on streaming? It's not out yet. Okay. But I have okay. performed it before. Yeah. Um, not the full song, but I performed parts of it before. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of went into like an old Kanye slash. I don't know. It's just like an older type of sound that I use yeah. um, with the auto tune and whatnot. But my mother's like, yo, this is a bone song. Yeah. And I'm like, for real? She's like, send this to him. See if he get on it. And I'm like, man, I don't know. I'm nervous. Yeah. So um, I sat on that idea for a minute. And then my boyfriend's like, dude, send the song. You got the direct number, bro. Like, right. stop tripping. No, that's So fine. I'm like, all right. So I send it. I hit him up. He sends it back. <laughs> he sends it back with a verse. Oh, dang. How long, <laughs> wait, how long did it take for him to send it back? Not long. Not long. Wow, it was wow. real quick. And um, the verse was like crazy. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm like, did he really just send this back? Yeah. Like, I, I didn't even believe it. Yeah. And he didn't even, he was just like, yo, like, you know, I rock with what you're doing. Yeah. Um, he just gave me some really good words of encouragement. Um, tell me, like, let them know when we want to promote it, everything, mm -hmm. and drop everything, and shoot a video. So Dad. that's what we're working on right now. Hey, that's actually that's probably the most legendary, I think, story that we we've, we've been able to have on this platform so far. Um, crazy. I I want to do I want to do I, let's get a couple more in because I want to whoop on you in a couple more. Yo, I'm mad yeah, cocky might, on this show. Nah, yeah, you up. might you might have to do something with me. You you might, might have, have to, to up, but. Not only do you got a relationship with, um, which is news to us, and I'm thank you for telling us that. But yeah. with, with with Bone, um, but you also dope. With, you also tight with one of our favorite groups and our favorite people. Um, with the Monday program. Oh yeah, yeah, those are the bros. Yeah. So 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 what's up? Tell me a little bit about how you built that relationship. Shoot. Um. Well, I've known Corey just for some years, just being on the scene. Period. Yeah. Um, 
I don't even know how me and Corey met. That's how long I've known. But that's him. dope though, because <laughs> I didn't know that Corey was always outside like that. Like I didn't know yeah. he was outside in that way to where he made sure that he was accessible. Because Corey Grant is like, he's that's yeah, the he's guy. That guy. Yeah, he's yeah, that guy, <laughs> that's sure. the guy. Yeah. I want to say that me and him had a lot of mutual friends. Mm -hmm. um, it was a summer where I had met these two girls, um, my friends Charday, Charnay, and Britt. Yeah. And Shouts out to Charnay. They had me kicking it that summer. They had me outside. Was, outside. So I was, pretty was this much before everywhere. City Girls or? Uh, yeah. All right, yeah. Bro. I'm All right. pretty sure it might right. have been. I, I'm not, like I listened to some of the City Girls, but I kind of like got hip to them probably when more people got hip to them. For sure. So I'm not sure about like their early stuff. What was it if you being outside before the City Girls? Before City Girls, what would you? What what would like before the City Boys? I don't know what we would have been. What would a City Girl have been before being a City Girl? What's a retro City Girl? Do we have an answer for that? Does production have an answer for that? Production doesn't. No, nope, production's looking really at me know. like I'm crazy. I don't really All know. Right. I mean, like, I'm still not even sure what a city girl is, to be exact. I don't think this is the platform to describe it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, 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 I don't I think agree. this is the platform to describe <laughs> it either. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to keep running. You can hit X. All right. Hit X. Cool. Um, Nah, man, I think, um, you, you know, we had a chance to uh, to chop it with Corey, and, and he was talking a lot about some of the people from the um, city that he believes in. Um, and, and even when we talked off scene, he was somebody that sort of pushed me in a direction to reach out to you and tap in with you. I saw this video of you. I think what makes you a little bit special and more than just a rapper, right, is you have this, you actually can play multiple instruments. Like you don't just rap, you, yeah. you play instruments. So I'm like, well, does she though? Cause I've seen a couple artists, they do their little thing. You know, they might pull out a guitar and somebody playing in the background and they look like they are doing it, but you actually did it. And I don't know where you were performing that, but I believe it was like, um, I want to say, was it like a black women's empowerment concert or women's um, or black empowerment something? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's in Elyria. Um, it Dope. was called Black Music Matters, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something like that. And, um, that was an interesting day because it was so cold. Um, I didn't know we were going to be outside. Yeah. So we were right outside by the water. Mm -hmm. And um, I was freezing, man. I was freezing. I'm like, I hope I'm not turning ashy on this camera, man. Like, um, I feel like I'm just dry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Real problems. <laughs> My fingers locking up. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like cold. For you know sure. Because I mean? you were like, playing the keyboard, too. Yeah. So you were rapping and playing the keyboard. Yep. What was the song that you was rapping when you was doing that show? It's the Seaside. That's, That's where uh, I thought I heard it from. Yeah, then. so yeah, you heard it there. Yeah, um, yeah. I took it off. I had it up there for a minute, and then I got rid of it from my my streaming for a second, just because I had a couple people, specifically a cousin who's like obsessed with the clip he heard. Yeah. So uh, anything I post, like anything, it could just be anything. He's gonna post something about East Side Drive. Yeah, for sure. And I keep having these conversations, like, man, it's coming out. Yeah, just, yeah. Just hang in there with me. Yeah. Anything I post, yeah. it ain't East Side, East Side. Yeah. But, uh, so it'll be back. Um, when I actually release the content, it yeah. goes with Eastside. But yeah, I uh, I started off in band pretty young. Um, I used to go to this real strict private school. Okay. And um, my cousins were going to school with the arts, and they were like they was kicking it. Yeah. So I'm like, I want to go there. Yeah. My mom's like, Well, what do you do? And I'm like, uh, You got a saxophone? Show me how to play that. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I'm about to do it. Why are you talking? You know what I'm gonna do? What? My fatality. Man. <laughs> no, what you were saying, no, don't worry about anything that's going yeah. on on this screen. It's all good. Oh, dang, I suck. All right, now, what was you but, saying, though? Uh, yeah, so she taught me how to play the sax. Mm -hmm. um, she taught me about three weeks before their auditions opened up, so I had to learn it real quick. Yeah. And um, I learned how to play that, got in the band. Um, I, School of Arts is 6th through 12th grade. Okay. And you have different programs like music, dance, art. Mm -hmm. My mom would never let me get out of music. And right. I was getting bored with it because... We didn't have like they never switched up the music. Yeah. Like we had a lot of the same sheet music. Yeah. Our band program didn't get as much money as the other programs. Okay. So like I would just switch instruments. Yeah. Just to stay like to make it interesting. So I just played a lot of different things, and then eventually got really into actual just production. Yeah. Um. So. And you you. So how do you go into the studio and, and knock out all these? Is that a long studio session or is it like at days at a time where you like, oh, I'm going to do production on this day, then I'm going to do the vocals on this day? Pretty much. Well, it depends. So one, I record myself. Okay. Um, I pretty much got my own setup. 
I mean, I, I I like studios sometimes, but I yeah. like studios for when I have everything. I already know it, exactly what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, we're just getting straight to it. Yeah, yeah. Um, most of the pre-production, I don't do that myself. For sure. Um, so the way I work, it could go a lot of ways. I could start off with making the beat, and then midway through the beat, the beat might not even be finished. I might already start hearing the words for the song and record that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've done that before. Sometimes I'll just make some beats, make beats, stockpile them. And then certain ones just kind of stick out to where I start actually writing on them. Yeah. Um, and then my friends, uh, the, the two that I mentioned, Cass and uh, Tay, they send me a lot of tracks. Like, they, they keep me loaded. Okay. If I don't have beats, they're going to make sure I have beats. Yeah, yeah, So for between sure. the three of those, man, I'm always pretty much writing something, coming up with something. Um, and I like to experiment with different sounds um, on the like, effects on my voice and whatnot. So, yeah, I saw that in like Jeeps uh, with the auto tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, I like recording at home for the most part because I could do that on my own time. For sure. You know what I mean? And I yeah. can kind of like make my own sounds to where, you know, like Travis Scott, he has his own type of auto tune where it's like, yeah. that's a Travis Scott type sound. You know what I mean? For sure. Kanye, he had his own kind of thing going on. Different people kind of had their own sounds that they eventually kind of tweak enough sounds together to make. Yeah. So that's what I kind of just be working on. So with that said, and we're going to get into our, I think we got two more rounds left. Okay. So hit X and then we'll get into our semi semifinals. But what would you say then when you take in all that in consideration, what would you say is like the, the Midwest sound now? Or is the Midwest sound, is it not defined yet? Is it still what it used to be? Is it something new? Where you, where um, you stand on that? I feel like we got a couple right now. Yeah, yeah. That all kind of like fall in line with what you could call a Midwest sound. Yeah. Um... I, uh, speaking of the Monday program, I feel like they do a good job of capturing the Midwest sound. Yeah, they do. Yeah. It's like, I can't describe it. It's like this kind of laid back. Yeah. Um, it's, it's reminiscent of some West Coast vibes, but it's not. And that's where we started that though too. Like that G-Funk style, um, that West Coast style for sure. Yeah, definitely. So I feel like that's kind of like in the mix. What? Yeah, definitely just broke her chin, which is mad. That's you know that's what? nuts. That's violating for sure. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Um, I feel like that. But then we have a faster sound that's kind of brewing out now, where it's like that drill, like um, Detroit wave that's kind of becoming a, a Midwest thing. Yeah. So I would say it's somewhere between those two right now. Yeah. But I still, um, I don't know if enough people are putting it out to where they're considering it. Yeah, that's a Midwest song. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Uh-huh. But that's what I think of as a Midwest song personally. Does Chelsea have a chip on her sh- does she have does Chelsea have a chip on her shoulder? Would you say that you personally have a chip on your shoulder when it comes to getting the things that you think you owed in music? Um, I used to. Yeah. I definitely used to. Um there was a point where I always felt like I had to work way harder. Yeah. Just for this like ten percent of any type of respect that like a lot of people got just with like bare minimum. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So but I never walked around with a chip in a way to uh negatively affect my interactions or how I go about it. I just transmit the energy. For you sure. know what I mean? Like, all right, something don't work out. Well, I feel like I got kind of like snap, snubbed or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But big bet. For you sure. know what I'm saying? And now sure. we're just going to kick it up in overtime and you'll be back. That's I like how that. I kind of like feel about stuff sometimes. But yeah. I don't necessarily have that negative chip on my shoulder where it's just like, yeah, forget the city. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Like, sometimes it could get frustrating here. You know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. a, it's an interesting time. Like, I feel like. Um, you got people here who want to enjoy certain things, but they need somebody to confirm if it's cool. Mm. That's what mm. I see a lot. Not That's even a just with yeah, myself, yeah. but just with different things. Yeah. But like as soon as it's considered cool by somebody who I guess they think are cool, then it's like, okay, yeah. we could like it. Mm-hmm. Or if they see it out of town. Oh, then, don't let it be in Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. With that. So yeah like, uh-huh. If they see it out of town, oh, bet. You know what I mean? But it could be the exact same thing happening up here for the last two years and y'all ain't that's facts. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's that that that's frustrating. Yeah. But at the same time, it's I get so much love too, though. Mm-hmm. I get so much love that I rather focus on 
The love. That, yeah, yeah, I get a lot of love, you know what I mean? I get a lot of just different things and opportunities that a lot of people didn't, don't get, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, you might get some shout outs from such and such and so and so, but I'm in the paper. Yeah, that's you know facts, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. That don't and happen on, to everybody. And on playlists. That don't happen to like everybody. Like, actually getting playlists, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. I look at it like that. Like, I can't really have a big chip on my shoulder because, you know what I mean? Everybody's hit got a different hand to dealt with that's a fact and we all got to work our our you know our hands so that's a fact so we're gonna get into our last and final round okay so hit x on this do you know what sdr stands for SDR, SDR. don't worry about it i'm gonna tell you right. so we have this sudden death round right so no matter how much that i've been beating you up today if you win this sudden death round you will walk away as a winner. Will you walk right. away with something? No. But you will walk away as a winner. So this is what I tell you, all right? These are rapid fire questions, sudden death. Just the first thing that come to mind, I want you to answer that, all right? Okay. All right, so who would you say is, if you could do a song with either Nicki Minaj, Rhapsody, or Tierra Whack, who would you do the song with? You can only choose one person. Oh, man, this is horrible. <laughs> not horrible. Oh man, this is horrible. This is so messed up. Um, You're not gonna pick Nikki. I thought you was gonna pick Nikki. I'm somewhere between Tierra and Nikki. Yeah, I, I know you're a big fan of uh, um, Tierra as well. I'm gonna have to go with Nikki though. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to so go you gonna do Nikki? Nikki? Okay, I'm not mad at that. Why Nikki? Um, because like for one, she's like a whole different type of legend. Like not saying like Tierra is definitely like a goat at what she does, but yeah. you know Nikki. She's a living legend, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And sure. you're, you're like, it gets to a point where we really gotta appreciate our living legends, you know what I mean? Right. She, she really put in hella work in the last decade. Yeah, true. You know what I mean? She owned the 2010s, so. Definitely hasn't been anybody as hot as her since. No, her influence is all over the place. It's yeah. like, you can't not see her influence For anywhere. Sure. So it's just like, I'd be honored to do a song with Nicki. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. that's legendary. Um, and just, I just know that it'd be a banger just because of the beat selection she uses. Yeah. I'm on that kind of wave right now. Like, I'm into like a certain style of beats right now and the wordplay. Okay. So next question. Who is the funniest member of the Monday program? Like, who make you laugh the most? Corey. Is it Corey? Is Corey a little goofy? I don't know though. Like Dorian, Dorian is silly too. But yeah, yeah. Corey, I don't know, man. Me and Corey be weak. Yeah, yeah. We be weak, man. I like I low key can't yeah. for real with him. Like, so yeah, I'm gonna have to roll with Corey. Definitely. All right. What is the favorite? What is your favorite song that you've written? My favorite song that I've written. Mm -hmm. Um, my favorite song that I've written is. Called long live. Well, no. Damn, man, this is really hard. These are some real tough questions. Hey, you know what? Um, That's why it's sudden death. While you're thinking, I'm gonna kick you. Oh man. <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, I think my favorite song that I've written. I would have to say. Uh, it's called Long Live MJ. It's not out yet, but. When you got you telling me about all these songs that's not out. When are they coming out? Man, just stay tuned within the next. I have something coming out Tuesday. I, I like got a that. song called PPA coming out Tuesday. Okay. Whole different vibe. I heard that. No, nah, I heard the um, I heard the snippet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so for that's sure. gonna be pretty fun. Yeah. Um and then we're gonna follow up with a couple more records and then past television drops. I like next that. month. So. And that's that that is the full that's album. The fullest album. And is that the first one too? Yeah. I like so that. So I had an EP at first. Mm -hmm. Um years ago I put out an EP, but this is my first full length project. Yeah. Um and I really like the Long Live MJ joint because it's the way I use the context of Michael Jackson songs. It, yeah. It's like, I just use like, you just have to see it. I'll let you hear it. I like that. You know what For I mean? For sure, but play that. Yeah, it's definitely crazy. All right, um, so we're going to keep the sudden death round going. For the record, you did lose. Though. I, know, I know. So what I will, I do have more questions though. I want to ask you this. Um, PSP or Nintendo Switch? Yes. Ooh, yeah, PSP, for sure. For sure. PSP. I saw that you you like, like you know how to mod systems a little yeah, bit too, don't PSP you? PSP, for sure. What don't you know how to do? Um, I know how to play violin. You heard it here. <laughs> you, you heard it here. <laughs> all right, so all right, so then the final one then is, I, is I'm, I'm going to keep this one super, super, super simple. Okay. Okay, are we going PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. 
This is super easy, man. Listen. PlayStation. I, so you, you you lost in the, the actual match, but you did answer all the questions. And you know what? I like you, Chelsea. So you're a winner here. What I will say is this. We need you to come back when these projects, when you start dropping this full, when you drop the full project, Chelsea Vision, Pastel, Pastel Vision. Vision. Once, you, once you drop Pastel Vision, we gotta have you back. What else can people expect from you outside of Pastel Vision? Is there anything coming up that you want people to know? A lot of videos coming up, a lot of content. We've been working pretty hard behind the scenes doing all of that. Yeah. Um, and just different trinkets that come with past television, um, merch, just I like that. You know, different shows. I like that. Uh, you'll be seeing me a lot. I like that. <laughs> well, listen, man, it's another episode of Button Mashing. As always, I am Dev the Voice. The guys is in the back. You see him, or Dave might have the vision blurred back there. You might not see him, but most importantly, you see Chelsea Pastel, man. Thank you for coming through, Chelsea. Oh, thanks for having me. Until next. <laughs> <laughs>